part soon. All right, good morning, guys. We're uh, here on our uh, on Saturday morning Zoom group with our PK app Bible study. And uh, today we're going to talk about Daniel in the critic's den and uh, relate that to promise three, a man and his uh, integrity. So <clears throat> uh, with that, uh, we've got a couple of new guys on. We'll, we'll hopefully they'll chime in here, um, Steve and James and, uh, and the rest of us have been here a, a couple times. So uh, uh, we're, we're all here and blessed and thankful to the Lord that we're here. Jonathan, would you pray us in? Sure. Father God, we just come before you just in awe and amazement of how you divinely make things happen with testimony of James Campbell coming to the Promise Keepers and then coming and seeing the app and being here this morning on how you're working that way. But then we also see an example, Lord, of nope. how you work through Carl and through other brothers to where Steve is here because of Carl and how he has now found the PK app. Lord, we just give you all the praise and the honor and the glory for that, that through your divine hand, we're all coming together. And the conference was incredible. And I hope and pray that all the simulcasts felt the same way. The messages were so powerful and the, the music was incredibly just worship felt. It, it drew us together in the stadium. And to hear so many men just singing praises to you was incredible. And it was just a, a mighty movement of men. And Lord, I just pray over these guys. I pray for this session as we get into Promise 3, a man and his integrity. And we're wrapping up our talk about Daniel and just his excellent example of integrity, no matter what, and his faithfulness to you and in return, your faithfulness and goodness to him. I just praise you and just love you. And it's in your name I pray. Amen. 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 <clears throat> well, um, so we can continue. We can continue with uh, any discussions and any discussions that we have today. You can relate them back to promise keepers, to lessons learned for things you'd like to see done better things that just really touched your heart um uh, and I'll, I'll start off that with just telling a story of of uh you know being able to to uh, pray with guys on friday night at the altar call uh was is just touched my heart and um i had uh i only got to pray with two guys um uh, I did that separately. One was, you know, he came up for the altar call and he was kind of standing behind where the cameras were and uh, like he didn't want to go any farther forward. And uh, I walked up to him and I, I just started talking to him and seeing how he was. And um, he was, he was clearly, um, he was clearly blessed by the Lord. He was definitely a believer already, but what got me and something that had never happened uh, to me before was that he was coming forward for another brother. Uh, his name was, the guy's name that I talked to was Griff, and he was coming forward for, for Sean. And uh, Sean, I'm sorry, Seth. And Seth's marriage um, seemed to be having trouble, and Griff just wanted to pray for him, and, and so we did. And uh, so intercessory, inter, intercessing for others um, is a real thing. <laughs> And God called him up to for us to pray about that. Um, and uh, the other the other gentleman that I got to talk to um, and pray with was uh, he kind of came up as the lights were going up. And so you know I was like, oh no, they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna kick us out. Let's let's get him. I'll talk to him. I'll find out what he needs. And maybe we we'll go outside and we we'll pray or whatever. But um, God doesn't work that way. He wasn't gonna push us out. Um, um, this guy's name was Steve and, uh, he was also having trouble with his marriage. And as you guys know, you know, I'm, I'm not like on rock solid all, always with my marriage either. So I'm praying with these guys and God's just laying things on my heart. And, um, uh, this, uh, Steve is a, is a pastor 
and um, and he just he just wanted prayer. Uh, things had gone woefully wrong um, in the recent few months, um, and um, and he just wanted to um, reckon be able to reconcile. And his wife is not ready to do that yet. So uh, things are just going wrong. He's got uh, four kids. I think he. Oh no, that was I guess that was just to me. I started chatting with him in the app this week too, and it's on a private chat, which you can do. And uh, he he sent me a picture of his kids and um, and uh, it was just it was just awesome. It's awesome that he we know he's got a few brothers around him um, that are helping him uh, and and keeping him supported and um, you know, not he's not being isolated. I introduced him to Jim Halverson and uh, Jim lives in North Dallas and Steve lives in North Dallas now and so uh, you know I think they started talking and I I just pray that. Uh, you know, he'll be connected with other guys, guys that'll help him with, with the things that he needs and guys that'll be there to encourage him and pray with him when he's, uh, when, when he's starting to get down. Um, we also, also want to acknowledge, um, and uh, we can have a prayer uh, about this as well today, I hope. Uh, but uh, we found out through the week, and thanks, Jonathan, for, for reaching out and finding out um, that one of our brothers that's normally here with us, uh, Dan, Dan um, he passed away in his in his sleep uh, on the fifth of July, and uh, you know I think we've been different ones of us have been trying to reach out to him, and uh, and and talk to him because uh, he was going through a lot of things, and uh, and and we were trying to encourage him and and uh, help him through that, pray him through those things, and. Uh, the Lord is just his time, I, I think, uh, for him to go home to the Lord. And I, uh, I pray and I know that he knows uh, that uh, that he's in a, uh, we know that he's in a better place because of uh, he came to acknowledge the Lord as his savior uh, and, and Lord. And um, I just pray that some of his family saw that as well, because he'd had a fairly difficult uh, childhood and upbringing and uh, we just, I pray that uh, through his example and through his witness, uh, some other people around him and especially his family uh, got to know the Lord and hopefully we'll seek the Lord more so. Um, so with that, uh, anybody else have anything they want to share from the, the weekend? James, yeah, I, uh, you, oops, sorry, Carl, yeah, um, yeah. you just uh, speaking about Steve, um, uh, praise for him. Uh, he um, he uh, he showed up at uh, regeneration at our church on Tuesday evening, and um, he uh, he's going to continue with the. Uh, he picked up the book and uh, he will. Uh, he's planning on coming next week. So um, that's um, that's a recovery um, ministry. That's. Uh, similar to Celebrate Recovery. It's a 12 uh, uh biblical Christian um, ministry that uh, um, that's made for uh, people that are struggling. And um, anyway, uh, and I, just like you, I've reached out to him and um, his heart is so open right now and just so needs to have uh, men surrounded, uh, surrounding him. And uh, I think, uh, uh, you guys have prayed for him already. It's been posted on the uh, Tina. If you guys remember, it's his wife. But uh, yeah, continue to pray for Tina, uh, for her heart to, um, you know, to uh, clearly be uh, uh, see um, uh, the situation here and just be. She's clouded right now. Just need to remove the clouds and allow her to God to work in her life, Lord, and just uh, restore this marriage and uh it was a great weekend uh, last weekend uh just totally amazing uh, glad i was part of that thanks jim, jim for, for following up with him as well um carl you had something you wanted to share yeah this uh about brother dan there i just um can't say enough of how wonderful it was to be a part of his life. 
to see you guys come together and bring him into a fold like this to love on him. I know Chris Henderson, you know, started the prayer group for him when he was trying to get away from the Mormon church. And since I had been a Mormon in my past, I was able to help him get through that. And, and I know I'm, I'm pretty sure Jonathan had conversations with him, and had a couple of phone calls with the brother. And I'm just thankful to God that he was led to, to come into this group for a little season to be with us. Um, cause he expressed to me during one of our phone calls that people shied away from him and he couldn't get them to talk to him and things like that. And, and I just want to say thank you brothers all for stepping up to the call and you, Jonathan, for reaching out to, to really reach out and find out what, what was going on with our brother. This is what I call a brotherhood. This is what I call the body of Christ. And I love you guys for it. Thank you. Yeah, and I'd, uh, I would like to, to have a prayer if any, anybody would uh, would like to lead that. That'd be great. Um, we don't need to pray for Dan anymore. We know where he is. He's in God's hands, um, in his loving arms, and, and he'll be uh, there forever. Uh, but I would like to maybe pray for uh, Dan's family and um, that uh, that they noticed. Uh, so. so Heavenly Father, uh, you are such an awesome father, Abba Father. And Lord, we just, uh, we thank you today for um, the fact that you had uh, this, this man, Dan, in our lives and uh, that we got to know him. We got to know his, uh, his deepest struggles, his, um, his concerns, his questions. And uh, Lord, uh, uh, just thank you for having him to be a part of our life. And I, I pray, Lord, that uh, his family will see uh, the turnaround that, that, was, that, was, that is, was happening in him, that, that had happened in him, and that they will see you, Lord, through uh, Dan's actions, uh, because you're so powerful and you can overcome all those other um, thoughts and ways and uh, you've, you've already won the victory for us, Lord. You give us hope and you give us light in this dark, dark world sometimes uh, that it is. But Lord, we as Christians, when we find you, uh, we're just called to share you. And Dan did that. And it was so awesome to see how he was sharing uh, you with those around him. Uh, so I pray for his family. I pray uh, that his family um, continues to, to see you with uh, people around them and just notice things that maybe they didn't have the opportunity to notice before, um, before. And, uh, we just ask, we lift all this up in your, in the precious name and the blood of our, your son, Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Um, <clears throat> so another thing I'd like to pray about, and we can save this to the end is, uh, is pastors. Uh, we've got a few, I think we've got a few pastors here that uh, that join us often, and uh, we've got a, a couple, um, we've got, I, I met, I don't know how many pastors who are ambassadors this past weekend, who, um, you know, they're, they're in there jumping in and helping just like anybody else who's volunteering, and uh, it was pretty awesome, and um, so I'd just like to pray for the pastors at the end, uh, remember to do that. Because uh, they, they do go through tough times, and then we'll include Steve as part of that, because uh, he and his wife were uh, gung-ho, um, and they were he still is, and his wife has turned uh, to uh, friends who are pulling her away from the church, and she just got, uh, as it happens quite often, uh, when we do ministry, uh, you know, we, we want to help others, and we forget that God gave us our own family first to minister to, and that um, it, sometimes it's easier to 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 minister to other people than to deal with the problems that you have in your own life as a as a as a minister or as a as a pastor, especially uh, when when you're doing that definitely full time. So uh, just uh, think about that as we're lifting up and thinking about our, our virtue this week and uh, our integrity. Uh, anybody else have anything they need or want to share right quick? Or... 
Does it have to be right quick? So I just wanted to share something with uh, about Dan. Um, he had asked me on May 11th to be his accountability partner because uh, he was just needing someone to talk to, to do life with. And so we texted almost every day, I bet. And we talked on the phone several times a week. And he had missed a portion of our Mighty Men of Prayer ser video series that we went through. So I told him, I was like, not a problem. Like, I've got, a, I've got the videos, so let's do it. So me and him were working through that. And I was working with him to try to get a simulcast, try to get him to a simulcast because he was super excited about the conference. And through our relationship, I was able to help him get to Fresh Encounter, which is, it just happened to be the church because he was looking to get back in church because he had church hurts. And it just happened, so happened to be the church that was right next door to where he lived. And they were so welcoming. Like he talked with the associate pastor, the senior pastor, they had lunch with him. He wound up immediately getting connected to the Tuesday night men's group. And so I told him, I was like, why don't you do a, ask the church to do a simulcast there? And he was like, but I'm not a PK ambassador. I was like, man, don't worry about the title. Like, we're all ambassadors of Christ. Like, being a PK ambassador is doesn't mean anything compared to being an ambassador for the Lord. And I was like, just ask them and see what they say. And they were on board with it. And so I try, I've try. i tried calling the church. And because churches usually have weird hours during the, during the week, I wind up emailing them. So I'm waiting to get a response to see if they did hold the simulcast. If they did, how many men attended? And out of the men that attended, how many came forward? And so if it winds up that I can get a response from them, it's gonna be because Dan made a decision to get out of the boat mm -hmm. and follow Jesus, that this church had a simulcast, this many men went to the simulcast and this many men came forward and received Jesus. And it was because Dan chose to step out of the boat. Amen. So I just wanted to share that with y'all. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Jim, did you have something or were you you're agreeing? You're on mute. Oh, that was an amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. Yeah. Awesome. <clears throat> well, um, yeah, like I said, go ahead and, and chime in with anything else that comes to mind. Uh, and, and certainly if it relates to what we're talking about today, uh, Daniel and the Critics Den, um, <clears throat> the warm up for today. And, and guys, um, for, for, for James, uh, so now we have three Jameses on the call. So <laughs> uh, maybe we're going to need a few more. And uh, Steve, uh, the way we do this is uh, we we try to we post um, the information that's in the study uh, throughout the week. So on a daily basis, there's a post, and so we hope that you'll respond there. Uh, think about it throughout the week. Uh, engage with others who maybe can't join us here, and uh, there's there's a lot of guys in the app, and more and more are are, are becoming active, and it's just awesome to see. Uh, but we also see that people are hurting up there. Uh, and so we do pray in the app also for, for guys um, as we see the need. But um, uh, for the warm-up for today, uh, people seeking public office often peek through the, the drawn curtains to make sure that reporters are not staking out their private lives. Why is there such a natural uh, suspicion toward those in the public sector? Sometimes the faith of the public person is also under scrutiny, and why is that? I think it's one base reason there is because we've seen so, so much corruption in our governmental systems from, from the top all the way down that people just have no trust anymore. So, so they're going to dig and, and find out. And I think it's also a, a, another part of that root cause is it, it's become part of people's nature to want to dig dirt, to try to bring other people down. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. It's all, I mean, the media is all about sensationalism. 
you know. So I mean, there's there's some people who do legitimate digging just to see if the politician has character and integrity. But <laughs> honestly, it's like it just seems like the media is just like all you know, like you know, Carl said, it's all about the dirt, you know. I mean, we've seen um, in the past few years, um, you know, people who typically, you know, they're they're public officials, maybe judges or or um, or uh, Supreme Court. Uh, nominees or cabinet nominees and um, and they're really good people uh, but but there are very few of us walking this earth I, I only know of one that walked the earth and was perfect uh, his name was Jesus of Nazareth and but but all the rest of us and, and including those people that are public figures make mistakes uh, most of us make mistakes every day maybe even multiple times a day and we need we need God to lead us. We need God to have the hope and the and show us the way. And uh, He's there. He's willing to do that. All we have to do is ask. But um, but but a lot of people don't acknowledge that. And um, and and they don't acknowledge. Hey, I'm a person. I'm a human being. I I make mistakes. I've made wrong decisions uh, in my past. And uh, and be willing to live up to that and own up to that. And then do their best to live as Jesus uh, taught us to, as, as, as God wants us to, as he designed us to. Uh, so I'm going to read the background for our scripture uh, passage today, uh, which is Daniel 6, uh, 1 through 28. Uh, and if maybe a couple people could, could, could take this and you know, one read half of it and the other read the other half, that would be awesome today. But at the age of 80, Daniel experienced a distinguished career in public service. Even though he was in high favor with King Darius, his, his colleagues felt nothing but hostility toward him. In our culture, the words character and integrity are mentioned but rarely defined. But rich definition is given uh, to these terms in one of the most well-known stories in all the Bible. Daniel 6. We'll read the first, uh, if, let's see, 14 chapters or so, 14 verses or so. Uh, I, I can take, um, I don't know the way it's laid out in my Bible. We got one through nine is actually the plot against Daniel. And then 10 through 23 is Daniel in the lion's den. And then 24 on out is Darius honors God. So if you want me to do the first one, I'll do yeah. that. Yeah, read one through nine, and then somebody else pick up. Okay. It pleases Darius to set over the kingdom 120 satraps to be over the whole kingdom, and over these three governors of whom Daniel was one, that the satraps might give account to them so that the king would suffer no loss. Then this Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and satraps because an excellent spirit was in him, and the king gave thought to setting him over the whole realm. So the governors and satraps sought to find some charge against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find no charge or fault because he was faithful, nor was there error or fault found in him. Then these men said, we shall not find any charge against this Daniel unless we find it against concerning the law of his God. So these governors and satraps thronged before the king and said thus to him, King Darius live forever. All the governors of the kingdom the administrators and satraps, the counselors and advisors have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whoever petitions a god or man for 30 days, except you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing so that it cannot be changed according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which does not alter. Therefore, King Darius signed the written decree. Oops. All right, 10 through 23, I think it was. I can read that. Thank you, John. Now, when Daniel knew that the document was signed, he entered his house. Now in his roof chamber, he had windows open toward Jerusalem, and he continued kneeling on his knees three times a day, praying and giving thanks before his God, as he had been doing previously. Then these men came by agreement and found Daniel making petition and supplication before his God. 
Then they approached and spoke before the king and the king's injunction. Did you not sign an injunction that any man who makes a petition to any god or man besides you, O king, for thirty days is to be cast into the lion's den? The king replied, The statement is true. According to the law of Medes and Persians, which may not be revoked. Then he, they answered and spoke before the king, Daniel, who is one of the exiles from Judah, pays no attention to you, O king, or to the injunction which you sign, but keeps making his petition three times a day. Then as soon as the king heard this, this statement, he was deeply distressed and set his mind on delivering Daniel. And even until sunset, he kept exerting himself to rescue him. Then these men came by agreement to the king and said to the king, Recognize, O king, that in the law of Medes and Persians, that no injunction or statute which the king establishes may be changed. <clears throat> then the king gave orders, and Daniel was brought in and cast into the lion's den. The king spoke and said to Daniel, Your God, whom you constantly serve, will himself deliver you. A stone was brought and laid over the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet ring and with the signet rings of his nobles, so that nothing would be changed in regard to Daniel. Then the king went off to his palace and spent the night fasting, and no entertainment was brought before him, and his, slip, his sleep fled, him, fled from him. Then the king arose at dawn at the break of day and went in haste to the lion's den. When he had come near the den, to Daniel, he cried out with a troubled voice. The king spoke and said to Daniel, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you constantly serve, been able to deliver you from the lions? Then Daniel spoke to the king, O king, live forever. My God sent his angel and shut the lions' mouths, and they have not harmed me, inasmuch as I, have found, have, I was found innocent before him, and also towards you, O king, I have committed no crime. Then the king was very pleased and gave orders for Daniel to be taken up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no injury, whatever was found on him because he had trusted in the God, in his God. And at the king's command, the men who had falsely accused Daniel were brought in and thrown into the lion's den along with their wives and children. And before they reached the floor of the den, the lions overpowered them and crushed all their bones. Then King Darius wrote to all the nations and peoples of every language in all the earth, may you prosper greatly. I issue a decree that is every part of my kingdom, that in every part of my kingdom, people must fear and reverence the God of Daniel. For he is the living God, and he endures forever. His kingdom will not, <clears throat> will not be destroyed. His dominion will never end. He rescues and he saves. He performs signs and wonders in the heavens and on earth. As he rescued Daniel from the power of the lions, so Daniel prospered during the reign of Darius and the reign of uh, Cyrus the Persian. Thank you for, uh, for for helping read that. And welcome, Bill and Jared. Uh, good morning. Um, good morning. Uh, <clears throat> so the first question in our study here is, um, is, is what did Daniel's colleagues know to be true about his character? that he trusted in his God and that he wasn't going to turn from his God and that he was going to, no matter what anybody said, he's going to continue to follow and trust in his God in all situations. Mm -hmm. Right. So he also had integrity, right? Uh, they had seen him over the years stand up uh, for what was right in his God's eyes and not necessarily what was right in the, the king's eyes or the people around the king's eyes. Uh, he, he, they'd seen wonders and miracles work through Daniel as well, right? And the, 
the various dreams that, that Daniel was able to uh, even see, foresee, uh, or see uh, that, that weren't actually told of him and they weren't his own dreams, but God gave him enough information to be able to know what the dream was and to, um, to help the king at the time uh, to understand what was, uh, what was going on and what was going to happen. Right, so he was, he was a man of God, a man of integrity, and um, I don't know why did why did uh, his colleagues have a problem with him? I think. Oh, because he was getting he was getting recognitions uh, and righteous recognitions because of his obedience to God. And, you know, other people weren't doing what God wanted them to do. And they saw him being magnified in certain cases. And so I, I'll get to the real point. Of it. Come on, guys, which ones of us have never seen somebody else around us, one of our peers, get a promotion or something like that? And we felt like maybe we deserved it. You know, so I'm pretty sure we can all understand at some point in our life, that feeling of, wow, why is he getting all the good stuff? Uh, well, maybe because he's being, being obedient to God and doing what he's supposed to be doing. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, they'd, they'd, uh, they'd seen him thrown in the fire before too, right? And um, not a, not a, not a burn, not a, nothing, right? Um <clears throat> So, so why was he favored by God and others uh, around him not so much? Uh, oh, but, uh, but oh, by the way, he went through some horrible uh, situations, right? He got to walk with God through these situations and, and things that most people couldn't imagine themselves getting through them. And we all go through things. Uh, and we've talked today already about some things that uh, some of our our, uh, our new uh, friends, our new brothers have, 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 are walking through right now, right? Uh, God doesn't I'm, say he's going to make it easy on us. I'm not sure exactly how you meant that being thrown into fire um, other than just living through his normal stuff. Because um, that was Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, actually, that were in the fiery furnace that walked out. But Daniel was taken through a lot of fiery, fiery trials as he was going on. I mean, to be in front of Nebuchadnezzar trying to interpret a dream that he didn't even know what it was and, get, you know, or tell him what the dream was and not know what it was and then interpret it. And then the same thing with Belshazzar, you know, what's the writing on the wall? I mean, they had anybody that had been around Daniel knew that it, nothing was wavering to him. He, he was all about God, regardless of what the situation was. He was like only the only dirt that they could find with Daniel was that he was too faithful to God. You know, he was obviously uh, uh, known by his prayer, prayer life because of, uh, um, you know, this is where they exactly where they attacked him. Yep. Yeah. And is that is that the dirt that they're going to find with me? Is it that I'm too faithful to God that I've got yeah. too much integrity, or is it that sometimes I'm a knucklehead and I make bad choices? Yeah. So why did they attack his religious reliefs? I think Jim, you kind of answered answered this right. Uh, they couldn't find anything else wrong, right? He he was a man of of. Uh, doing and obeying what God had him do. And whether they thought that was right or wrong is no different to him. You know, uh, I found the similarities too. Um, as I contemplate, I have actually read the first six chapters of Daniel probably six times this last week. Um, just looking for different things to let God speak to me on. And, and this whole thing about the, you know, them coming to Darius with, with these, with this decree, um, that happens to us today in, in our, all these props and different things that are hitting our legislation. Um, 
you have a lot of times people signing stuff that they don't know what's there. Um, and this is the same thing that, that happened here with Daniel. These guys knew that a certain thing, if they, Darius wouldn't think about it, if we just go up and say, hey, you know, we know you like to have people pray. So, so, and to pray a certain way. So we're going to say no man can pray, you know, and, and, and he agreed to it. And he wasn't even thinking about the ramifications of who would be affected by it. Because because it, it obviously he had a, um, a love of sorts for Daniel, mm -hmm. and so when he found out that Daniel was praying, he he knew immediately like oops I goofed, and I think that happens in our whole judicial system and legislative systems a lot. I'm not trying to make it a political issue, just a point yeah. <laughs> just a point that I see. Yeah, certainly our our religious freedoms are being attacked right now, and you know it's up to us to stand stand up and and speak out and tell our representatives. Oh, by the way, they're not our controllers, right? They're to represent the people. Um, you know what it is we want, and you know, I think maybe for a few years, I don't know how many, ten, twenty, maybe even thirty years. Um, Christians have been fairly silent. You know, we've been going about our own, our own business, doing our own thing, and um, and and willing to let some things in this world happen that we, I believe, we all know is wrong and 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 shouldn't. I'm not going to bring out any specific situations um, today, but but standing up for what is right is what God wants us to do, and He tells us exactly what is right. And what is wrong in the Bible? I don't know about you guys, but you know, I fully believe that the Bible uh, is our guidebook to life, and it tells us in every situation that probably that we can ever be in what is right, what's the right decision, what's the right action, and what's the wrong action. And a lot of people interpret the Bible as as having a lot of gray areas. I don't think I don't think that's the case, and I I get that from you know the the study uh, for other people's studies of um, that, that if, that, that God has a right way to do things and we can choose to not quite do them that way or whatever, but, um, but we're going to, we, our world are going to suffer the consequences of not following his, his way, uh, and, and his, his right, right way. So, <clears throat> um, yeah. And now that's, and that's being attacked is, 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 you know, we, maybe start to speak out and we start to say our, our piece. And, and, and as I told you guys, you know, when all the rioting was going on in the streets, um, you know, last summer, I think it was, um, it, God just laid it on my heart that we should go and prayer walk around those, those streets and uh, maybe not be a part of the crowd, but be praying over the crowd and uh, letting people know that, that, um, that there are still Christians who, don't believe that that's the right thing to be doing and that some of the things that were happening were not uh, not how our world should go. So anyway, I better shut up. Um, but <laughs> the, our, our religious beliefs are being attacked. And that's the, that's the bottom line. What are we going to do about it? All right. Well, how, did Daniel, know, how did Daniel respond to the King's edict? Sorry. Go ahead, go ahead Carl. I was just going to say, you know, it all falls down to, to Tony Evans' wonderful thing. <laughs> through the whole thing but if you want a better nation right or if you want a better world with better nations and better states and better cities and better communities and better churches and better families then we got to be better men it, 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 all, it all starts with us amen amen and i think it's i think it's also one of those things where you know the people in the temple selling goods and everything, you know, Jesus didn't stand outside the temple and pray that they would stop or ask them to stop. He went into the temple and he flipped tables and told them that what they were doing is wrong. And, you know, there's a time for prayer in our inner room. And then there's a time to step out of our inner room and take action and not just sit idly on the sidelines. And I think that's a lot of what, we as men have been doing is sitting idly on the sidelines while our wives take care of our kids 
while our wives take care of our house, while our wives cook and do the dishes. And all we do is step out of the home, go make a little bit of money, and then come back and forget that not only are we supposed to be providers financially, but spiritually and emotionally as well. So it all starts with us. It all starts with me. So what had Darius observed over time that gave him hope for Daniel's deliverance from the lions? Well, I'm not sure exactly how close the, you know, Darius was to Belshazzar and Belshazzar to Nebuchadnezzar. Literally, I mean, you know, Belshazzar, he knew what happened with Nebuchadnezzar and Darius, I'm sure, knew what happened with Belshazzar. And so by this point in time, you know, you're talking about generational curses or generational sins, you know, like three generations down the road of kings here. By this time, he should probably already have. Well, it's like I said, when he signed the decree and they came to him later and said, oh, we found Daniel praying when you told us nobody can. He knew immediately. He knew immediately um, that I, I've really goofed up here because I believe he already trusted in Daniel's God. Uh, but he was just afraid to actually proclaim it um, because of pride and selfishness and all those other things that we go through. Um, but when this situation arose, then he's like, I'm certainly hoping God delivers him because I believe Daniel's a good man. I think that's what was in his heart. Anybody else? I'll jump in here. What about the people around us that observe us and how we um what are they seeing about us are they seeing god through us i i believe darius had seen god uh had seen god through daniel his actions uh, and daniel just didn't matter didn't matter what the king said or it didn't matter what the king decreed or it didn't matter what the people around the king said who were that peer pressure uh, maybe, <laughs> I guess you would call it, if a king has peer pressure. But, um, but they were putting pressure on him to, uh, to, to raise himself up um, higher than anything on earth uh, for, for people to, uh, to acknowledge the king and to bow down to the king, those kinds of things, right, that had happened. Um, and here Daniel wasn't about to. Um, he was... Um, he was only going to bow down to his God, and he did it. He did it in a in his upper room, but with the windows open. He wasn't hiding anything that he was doing. It right. He was just yay. Um, but but that goes to, um, you know, what is the, what are others seeing us do, right? Each of us uh, as men, uh, are we? Are we able to stand up or to to those things that are wrong, right? Or sorry, to stand up to those things that that we know the world is doing that are wrong, and uh, not good for our souls, not good for the souls of the people around us and the people. Um, you know what people don't don't seem to understand is that God has our people in our a lot of people in our world today don't see that God has our best interest in mind, right? He is his way is is going to be uh the best way it's not you know these other ways you know people are into uh, you know quick wins uh self gratification instant gratification you know all the things that make you feel good just do it right uh that's not god's way he's he's got a plan for humankind and uh and if you as you read through the whole Bible, it's like we just keep forgetting that he is God and he's got he's got that best plan in mind. And we we're not going to be able to to figure a better way out. Um, we haven't in um, 
I don't know, however many years you think that the world's been around, 10 or 20,000 years at least, right? Some say billions, but I don't really, I don't really subscribe to that. Um, but, but some do, and that's fine. It, it doesn't matter how long it's been around. We've made mistakes uh, since day one, uh, almost day one with Adam and Eve, right? So um, what was ultimately accomplished in the kingdom by the lions missing a meal that evening? That the people there saw that um, he went into the lion's den, he wasn't harmed, and he was in there for the entire night. And when the king came and asked, "Please let your your God have saved you," and they were say that he was saved. And then when the other people got thrown into the lion's den, they were immediately killed by the lions. And so they knew that okay. You know, Daniel's God is powerful and that he has saved him from all these very hungry lions that wanted a meal and that he had favor from God because of that. And that the king put out a decree then that said, okay, we're going to worship the same God. Yeah. Anybody else? Tom, you can Tom, you can jump out of, out of here. Sorry, I'm just going to push you a little bit. Maybe not too much. Hopefully, not too much. <laughs> All right. Um, so, what was ultimately accomplished in the kingdom? Yes, uh, as as Steve said, um, we're you know, those lions aren't going to miss a meal. Uh, the lions around us today are not going to miss uh, getting their, uh, their, what they, what they want out of it probably even. Um, but it may cost, it may cost either us or it may cost others, um, you know, something. So, um, so consider this, I'll read the consider this, and this is from Bill McCartney, um, the former, um, president, I guess, president and CEO of Promise Keepers, but also a, a football coach, a head football coach at uh, University of Colorado and a national champion. Uh, don't be like the chameleon who, <clears throat> who fits into every situation. When he's with the people in the church, he's church-like. But when he's with the guys in the street, he's like one of the guys in the street. Come out from among them. Show them the contradiction. Show them the alternative. Show them how to how a promise keeper lives. So why is there so so in our wrap up? So why is there so often resistance to men of integrity? I think a lot of it has to do with no one likes a, a light shined in their face. And a lot of it is, you know, we want the spotlight on us. And so when the spotlight's on somebody else, then we're in the dark and we feel alone and left out. And so we start attacking those in the light because we're selfish and it's all about us. And if I can, if I can find something wrong with you, then it makes me feel better about myself. I mean, because we see that everywhere, especially like in the workplace and stuff like that. Yeah. I also think that um, sometimes when people, they don't want to change, you know, they want to stay in their darkness and in their own um, way of living. And that means that if they're going to come to God, come to know Jesus, there's going to have to be change in their life because the Holy Spirit's not going to allow them to continue to live in the way that they are. And they're afraid of that. And they don't want to make that change. They want to continue to live in the way that they feel 
good with and that it's you know they don't want to come around to doing things god's way because that would require work and some of us that had changes in our life may find it difficult they say a prophet's not heard in his own land um i've worked at the company that i work with for over 15 years now and i've only rededicated my life to serving God about four years ago. Uh, so 11 of the, you know, some of those people have been with me for that entire 15 years. Um, it's really uh, just like with my family, especially my wife, it's difficult for them to believe that somebody can lay down the way they used to be and start living the way they're supposed to be. Um, so Sometimes that's a difficulty for us. It's, and that's why, um, that's why we have to live each day and, and try to be like Daniel, who is steadfast every day. His integrity and his character is every day. God, God is my God. God is the God. This is what God wants me to do. And this is what I need to do. Um, so we have to just, I'm not, I, I know Jim Appleson and myself were, you know, we're doing some work right now. You guys saw my prayers. Um, so sometimes we have to, to overview our past to, to go forward and to try to help other people. Uh, but it's not going to be received very well in certain areas. And I think a lot of this has to do with the, you know, the way the other people around Daniel was trying to throw him into the lion's den and, and the way they did uh, Hananiah, Michelle and Azariah by, you know, getting them thrown in the fiery furnace. It's like people don't want to believe that God is the way to go. Um, but once we've made that decision, then we need to walk that walk and we need to make sure that, okay, they saw us one way. It's like it says in the chosen, you know, I used to be one way, but now I'm completely different. And the only thing in between that time was Jesus. It was him. Yeah. So, it's just going out and, and, and being a Daniel. And I know, I know the promise keeper thing this last week, and, you know, was about the Gideon men. All right. So um, there's a lot of examples that we should live by. Yeah. I want to jump in if I can on this. Yes, absolutely. So uh, I completely agree with you, Carl. And uh, everybody has their own testimony and, and mine's too lengthy to share at this time, but you have to realize that, you know, God will provide you the calling cards. He will tell you what you need to do, when you need to do it, how you need to do it. It's, but it's up to us due to our free will to listen. It, the, the problem is, you know, God's always there, but we're not always there. Amen. And so we have to be obedient and teach ourselves to listen to God, to follow God. And that being said, October 12th, 2019, I died. And uh, by a miracle, grace of God, I'm here. Because even in the hospitals, the doctors couldn't believe I was still alive. They said uh, there was too much brain damage. There was too much physical damage. There was too much of everything. Uh, I died in the ambulance. I died in the hospital, and I died almost a year later on the operating table, um, and they still can't understand. But then fast forward, so why am I here? The idea is, if you listen to God, God keeps knocking on the doors, telling you, you have to be obedient, you have to be like Daniel, you need to pray, you need to continue to believe and practice the way that you are told to believe. You're told to follow the good works, the good word, the Bible, the scriptures, the, the preaching that men as vessels, or even women can share too, but as vessels, we are to pour out to others. So we are to listen not only to the scripture, but we're supposed to listen to others who will feed into us. If you choose to not listen, you choose to not follow, you choose to be, well, not like Daniel, then, yeah, you, you will find that you know, you will have a horrific life, but God will always take you back to where you're supposed to be. He will bring you to where you need to be. You just might be on a 
much more difficult road to get there. So Lord knows that I went down the wrong path many times. And, uh, but as God's my witness today, um, I'm now a, a chaplain and I go into trauma units and I go into VA hospitals and I, uh, which is very difficult for, to do because of the trauma that I've experienced. But even being at Promise Keepers, when God knocks on the door, he may not knock on your door. He may not knock on somebody else's door, but to tell you, and you need to be obedient to listen, to follow. So just like Daniel, Daniel kept praying. Daniel knew my God is great. Put me in the lion's den. It's okay. Because yep. guess what, God? You got this. And so I'm just going to be obedient and go, hands off. I'll let it happen. And uh, so I believe that for all men here, if you learn to listen and you learn to be obedient to what God is saying, then it's easy to follow. The best followers are even the have a, a ability to, to lead, right? But they're always followers first. So yeah. that's my two cents. Thank Come you. on, James, keep preaching, man. You Thanks. got us. Keep going. Praise yeah. God, James Campbell. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So. Well, thank you. Thank you. We're glad to have you here. Thanks for the, your uh, words of wisdom. Um, yes, and, and you're right. Um, you know, from my perspective, and and I'll I'll try to be quiet here in just a minute, and we'll go go pray. But there, um, you know, people in the world look at our church, look at people that call themselves Christian, and they see them make a mistake, and and uh, and and fall maybe fall from what they think is grace, but. Um, but, but as Christians, you're right. We have to, we have to know what God's word says. Therefore, that's why he calls us to, uh, stay in his word, stay in prayer, which is conversation with him, right? Listening as well as speaking to him. And, um, and, and I think a lot of our, our church going people, um, uh, don't quite get that. They go to church on Sunday, they get what they, they get what they, uh, receive in that church, um, but they haven't maybe throughout the week um, stayed close to God and, um, and, and they're there to receive, whereas God really wants you when you come into community with other people to give away as much or more than what you're getting. And he's going to bless that. And that's kind of what I see Daniel doing here is in, in through his integrity, he's giving more and showing more of his God than most people can even fathom, right? um to 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 think about so um stay in the word stay in prayer with god and then in my response to as a promise keeper what qualities in daniel's life would i like to have in my own and why so uh, maybe maybe like i said you know today throughout the day and tomorrow before we start posting the next uh, try to get in the app and, and answer that question for other guys and start that conversation of what qualities in daniel's life what I like to have in my own life and why. And um, I just think that I agree with you. I agree with, I think a few people have said it. We all uh, probably need to, to, to try to be Daniels, right. Uh, to, to live the way Daniel lived because that's just the way Christ lived. <laughs> right. And, and Christ wants us to be more Christ-like each and every day. We have to know him and we have to be close to him. And I pray that we'll all do that. Um, so sometimes we go around the, the horn here and pray, but um, I'm going to ask uh, if anybody, you know, just raise your hand if you have a prayer you want to you uh, put out there, and we'll let you do that. Otherwise, um, Carl, maybe you can pray us out. Might, you have time to do that still? Yeah. All right. All right, just go ahead and pray us out. I don't see any hands yet. Okay. Our Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity that we've had to join together this morning. We thank you. For our new brothers, James Campbell and Steve Laponis coming on board with us this morning. We thank you for Bill and Jared and James Haverson and Jonathan and our and Tom and and Lord, we just thank you for James and, and his his willingness to to be the leader of this group and to to put the time in that he does for promise keepers and for just your kingdom, Father. We thank you so much for 
the fellowship that we're gaining here, the brotherhood that we're gaining here. And, and we just pray for those of our brothers that aren't with us this morning, that, that they know that we're thinking about them and that we're praying for them. And, and we know that, that your guiding hand is in their life, Lord. And we just pray that you would allow us all to submit to your will, Father. Let us be the Daniels and the Gideons, Lord. Let us be the ones who stand out not because of anything that we do, Lord, but, but what we allow you to do through us. Father, we thank you for the promise keepers gathering and, and the, just the building up of the kingdom that we've seen over the last week and a half in just preparation for that event and for the res residual effects of it, Lord. And yes, we just pray that that, that doesn't res it, it doesn't um, subside in any way, Lord. Let's, let us keep this fervency and, and reaching for the Holy Spirit in your word. Father, go with each of us this week that we could continue to remain pure and holy in your sight, Lord. And help us as, in our daily struggles to reach to you. Help us to run to you instead of running to other things that we may have in our past, Father. And we just thank you again for, for this group of men and, and pray for strength and and numbers and, and just continued praying for each other and loving on each other. In your precious son, Jesus name, I pray, amen. 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 All right, um, All right brothers, thank you guys. I'm... Thank you guys, thanks Carl, have a great day. Um, you, if, if anybody needs to or wants to um, to stay on and you have any, any personal prayer you wanna do, 